Hello, YouTube. My name is Alan, and it's that time once again. Let's talk metal. Tonight, we're actually going to be talking more kind of hard rock than metal, talking about a band that I've enjoyed for a very long time. I never really hear them discussed very much on YouTube, and I think they just fall into a style that, yeah, a lot of metalheads don't pay a lot of attention to, but perhaps they should. The band we are talking about tonight is Royal Hunt. Uh, Royal Hunt falls under the category of progressive metal. Uh, when you use the progressive, you know, there's two ways to use it. Jeff Wagner explained this, you know, famously, you know, in one of his books. We sometimes use progressive as an adjective to describe music, you know, that has certain qualities, and that can be applied to pretty much any genre. You can have progressive jazz, progressive death metal, progressive, you know, power metal, etc., but, you know, there's also kind of a subgenre of metal that's called progressive metal. And, you know, Jeff categorized this as you know, like, you know, lowercase p versus uppercase p for progressive. And Royal Hunt is definitely one of these uppercase p progressive metal kinds of bands. And again, I think that's a style that sort of scares a lot of folks away because it's not a particularly heavy style. This is not an extreme metal genre whatsoever focuses more on musicianship, good vocals, and a lot of the bands will stray either towards power metal territory, another genre that's not a favorite for a ton of people, or they'll kind of drift towards more kind of hard rock territory. And that's kind of where Royal Hunt comes into the picture. Nevertheless, they're an extremely good band out of Denmark. They've been releasing albums since 1992, so they've been at it for about 32 years now. They've released 16 studio albums and also some very good EPs and live albums along the way as well. They've gone through multiple vocalists, and that's kind of where we're going to highlight some things tonight. The main man behind the project is Andre Anderson. He does the keyboards and some of the guitars for the bands, writes most of the music. A you know, very accomplished musician and songwriter. And yeah, the band you know, has had its ups and downs. I've always kind of kept up with them. I do not have all their albums. We're not going to listen to clips from every single album. But I want to kind of highlight some of the main periods from their history. Uh, for folks that enjoy this style of music, if you've never checked out Royal Hunt, I think... You definitely should. They are one of the better bands uh, in this style. And at certain points in time, I think they were the best band for this kind of style of progressive heavy metal. So band starts out in, like I said, like you know, the early 90s, and they released their first album in 1992 called Land of Broken Hearts. I don't have a hard copy of it, but this is the cover. You know, they do a lot, uh, especially early on with kind of, you know, the idea of having like, you know, the coat of arms representing the royal part of the name. Part of that uh, supposedly comes from Andre reportedly making claims that he has royal blood, you know, as part of his ancestry. He's Russian born, but I think both his... Um, parents are from you know, other areas one may be from georgia and georgia the country not the state and uh maybe the other from denmark uh so that may be where the kind of royal connection and the idea for the name royal hunt came from but regardless they released the first album in 92 and it features vocalist number one and the vocalists are kind of an easy way to break royal hunt's history up into different eras their original vocalist on the first two albums uh, was a guy named Henrik Brockman. Good vocalist. He's been in a lot of other projects over the years. But we'll begin with a clip of one of the tracks from this debut album so you can get a sense for where they started out and what they sounded like when Henrik was in the band. This will be a clip of the title track, Land of Broken Hearts. And as I usually do, I'll be skipping ahead a little bit in the songs, these kind of songs typically have a lot of keyboard synth work in the intro, so I'll often skip that so you can get a better idea of what they sound like, and we'll get to a part where the guy is singing. So here's a clip from Land of Broken Hearts.
right. So yeah, there you, gives you a very solid idea of what Royal Hunt sounded like early on. And you can tell right away that again, Andre is a very you know accomplished musician and composer. Really good instrumentation going on in the background and stuff. Henrik, as uh, a vocalist, does fairly well on the material. Uh, he is not the strongest vocalist that Royal Hunt has had. He lasted for the first two albums, the one that we just heard a clip of, Land of Broken Hearts. And again, I'll pull up pictures of a few of these as we go, because I do not have their entire uh, discography. But yeah, their second album uh, had the probably unfortunate title of Clown in the Mirror. And that comes with an equally unfortunate piece of cover art of, yes, a clown. Yeah, you know, this just isn't the kind of album that screams by me to somebody who's used to picking up, you know, Slayer and Cannibal Corpse and Metallica and, you know, Burzum albums. Uh, but both the first two albums are fine. They're, you know, not the best the band ever released, certainly not bad albums. And they both do have some tracks that stayed in the band's live set for a long time, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. But yeah, after the second album, now let's see, Clown in the Mirror, this one came out in 94. So after that, it was time for a change. And by 1995, they released the third album called Moving Target. And this one featured uh, a new vocalist for the band, D.C. Cooper. And I think most folks would agree this was definitely an upgrade behind the mic. Nothing against uh, Henrik, but uh, D.C. Cooper has you know, a very good voice, especially for this kind of heavy metal. And we'll check out a clip of one of the tracks from Moving Target. This is a song called Fade Away. Oh no, sorry, Far Away. Now that you are gone, don't tear me down. I'm lost and I surrender. Give me just the sign. Help to cross the line. We'll turn back the time and start So there we hear what Royal Hunt sounded like with vocalist number two, DC Cooper. And yeah, you know, DC's got you know, a good range, very emotive voice. Uh, you know, he can really take those kind of songs, have you know, those big vocal moments and make them shine a bit better than you know, Brockman could, in my opinion. So very good album here that the band's going kind of, you know, from strength to strength and gaining some momentum. Uh, just a quick side note, this one is a you know Japanese press with the OBI strip over here. Royal Hunt stuff has never been distributed particularly well in the U.S. There's a couple of exceptions to that, but most of the time their stuff has had good European and Asian distribution, but they can be a bit hard and a bit pricey to get in the United States. Part of the reason I've always had a little trouble keeping up with the band. I like them, but a lot of times a few years go by and I'll miss that another album came out because it gets no attention in the U.S. And stores don't carry it. And then when you do look to get it, it's like, ah, geez, it's another $23 Royal Hunt CD I have to order from someplace in Europe. Uh, you know, so a couple of ended up you know, with copies uh, from Japan, some I've got from Europe, uh, etc., so a little annoying for fans that they've never had the best distribution in the U.S. outside of a couple of albums we'll get to later. All right, so the band is doing good things. DC Cooper seems like, yes, a strict upgrade in the vocalist position. And before they would release their next studio album, they would do a two-CD live recording simply titled 1996, which came out in... 1996, and there's there's no joke here. 
Uh, this is an extremely good live set, and it allows you to hear DC Cooper tackle a lot of the material from those first two albums and give them his own spin. And he really takes some of those songs and makes them shine. Um, it's a very well-regarded live album. You know, live albums are not always my favorite. Some people are used to hearing lots of music in a live environment, and they prefer live albums. I didn't get to hear a lot of bands play live, uh, and even to this day, finding concerts anywhere in my area that I want to hear is relatively rare. So live albums, to me, a lot of times, it's just like, eh, and it doesn't sound as good as what you hear on the album. Well, of course. But uh, the 1996 recording by Royal Hunt is a real standout among live albums. Uh, and again, a very long track list since it's, you know, two CDs worth of material. So you, you get to hear a lot of, you know, fantastic musicianship, DCs, you know, in top form. So if you're interested in the early years of Royal Hunt, this is actually a very fantastic place to kind of check them out. After the success of the live album, the band would have to move on and record album number four, which came out in 1997. And this one was titled Paradox. Uh, this is probably the best known album in the band's discography. This was kind of you know, the album that helped them launch or catapult themselves towards the top of the progressive metal subgenre. Uh, if you talk to fans of that style who only ever heard one Royal Hunt album, odds are this is the one that they heard. Uh, it got you know extremely good reviews. Again, distribution wasn't great, but it was better than you know maybe the previous albums it had. And a lot of people really latched onto this album as kind of a watershed moment for the band and for progressive metal in the late 1990s. It's got kind of a concept to the album, talking about, you know, religion and, you know, trying to sort out, you know, how it sometimes tells you to do two different things at the same time. So that, again, there's a bit of a paradox there. Uh, has, you know, some brilliant moments on it. The track we want to check out from this one is, again, one of their signature songs of all time. It's called Long Way Home. So yes, there's a sample of the very majestic Long Way Home by Royal Hunt off the Paradox album. So yeah, the band is kind of at the height of their powers around this time. And as so often occurs, this is exactly when the unthinkable happens. And there's a split in the band. DC Cooper leaves. He would go on and make a very good solo album, just self-titled DC Cooper. I'm not a big fan when metal musicians wander off to do solo albums. Most of the time, that just feels like an exercise in ego. But the DC Cooper studio album is very good. A lot of the music is in the vein of the Royal Hunt material, which I think helps. He didn't wander off to try to do, you know, jazz, country and Western blues rock or something. Uh, he would also end up singing on several albums by the power metal band Silent Force. Not my favorite power metal band of all time. Cooper was, yeah, kind of, you know, the big highlight for that band, in my opinion. But this means that Royal Hunt was left at an end. Andre Anderson and company had to find a new vocalist, and so auditions were on. 
I should mention, you know, there were some other lineup changes in Royal Hunt over the years. You typically don't play for 32 or so years without having other lineup changes occur. So there have been a few cases of other band members coming in and out, though Royal Hunt has been, you know, had a relatively stable cores for multiple albums. It's just that difficult vocalist position that has shifted uh, the most times. So yes, by the time that you got the next album came out, which was 1999, they had brought on vocalist John West for the release of album number five, which was called Fear. Uh, John West, another very strong vocalist who, again, has played with a lot of different projects over the years. Uh, a couple of the better known ones he played on or sang on several of the Artention albums. And he also sang on the Feinstein album, Third Wish, which is a very, very good album. Uh, one of the best things that Dave Feinstein ever put together. So, yeah, we get John West comes in, has big shoes to fill, but uh, West has a very strong voice himself and fills in quite admirably. I actually like the Fear album quite a bit. Don't have a sample that I'm going to play off of this one today because we'll uh, check out uh, the next album that West was involved with. So you had Fear came out in 99. After that, you know, 2001 was kind of another big release for the band. It was uh, this album. Uh, Royal Hunt released The Mission. Uh, one thing that helped with this one is that it got you know much more visibility because they were now associated with Century Media for a period of time. And so... For a lot of folks, this was kind of their first time to easily check out what the band sounded like. And for this album, the band put out a real winner. It's a fantastic album start to finish. It, again, has kind of a science fiction theme, drawing inspiration from the work of Ray Bradbury in this case. So it had you know, that kind of extra little thing going for it, which went over well with a lot of fans, of course. And we will check out a clip here of the mission and get our first taste of what John West sounds like on vocals. Uh, this will be a clip of the title track, The Mission. And again, I'll have to jump forward a little bit to get past the, uh, the keyboard opening. Yeah, there you get a taste of the mission. A um, little you know, brighter, some you know, slightly futuristic sounds worked in there to go with the sci-fi concept of the album. And again, it is a great album. If there's kind of you know, a second high point in the band's catalog after Paradox, it would be the mission. And this is a good one to check out if you like John West's voice or just kind of want to hear this more... Uh, not quite mid period of the band, but you know, getting you know, again into kind of the early 21st century phase. So, after the success of the mission, there was uh, an EP that came out kind of tied into it called The Watchers. So, you can kind of tell right away just from the layout design and such that it's meant to conceptually tie in with the mission and again, Century Media affiliated. As you can tell from the track list, kind of long for an EP. And the deal here is that, you know, some of these songs are radio edits. Some of them I haven't played this. So there's a few live versions of several songs. Um, so, yeah, kind of a little bit, you know, of a, this and that put together. Some leftovers, you know, some extra tracks. And But again, a lot of this material is actually quite enjoyable as well. And this is one that, since it's not technically a full album... You often see it listed kind of cheap in you know discount prices, and it's not a bad introduction to what the band was doing around this time. It is worth noting at this point that 
because you know royal hunts distributed in you know Europe and Asia mainly, you will often get different pressings that can have different like sets of bonus tracks on them and such. And when things have been reissued, they'll have different sets of bonus tracks. So if there are particular songs or versions you're looking for, you know, always do check which pressing you're about to buy or order just to make sure that it's going to have the track list that you really want on it. So things are going pretty good. They've uh, managed, you know, what some people thought was impossible and found a great replacement for DC Cooper. And they've you know, gone on to release another big, fantastic album. After this point, it kind of felt like the band settled in a little bit. And it's not that the albums became bad, but it started to feel like the songwriting quality wasn't quite as strong. And you had a next album was in 2003 called I Witness. And again, not bad, has some very good tracks on it, but in, maybe, you know, it's a step down from the first two that featured John West. Let's see if I can pull up a picture of I Witness real quick. Uh, yeah, not, not exactly the best cover art uh, for that one. So again, not a bad album whatsoever, but not one I would reach for very often in their catalog. And the album that followed that one up came out in 2005, is entitled Paper Blood. This one, again, eh, better cover. But at this point, there apparently had been another kind of split in the band. I, you know, sort of you know, long-term members had departed. So this really boiled down to being, you know, only three core members listed, John West, Andre Anderson, and um, I'm blanking on uh, the third one, but, and I think he was new at the time. So yeah, they had kind of, you know, lost their core. And in my opinion, the music shows that, that there were obviously distractions going on. There are some people that rate this one pretty highly. It does have a couple of very, very good songs on it, but overall I find Paper Blood to be a bit lackluster. Um, I think it was the first Royal Hunt album I bought, whereas I was like, eh, wish I really had those 23 import dollars back. Um, and eventually kind of, I think it was also the first one I traded or sold or got rid of. It just not my favorite phase of the band. So this would also be the last album to feature John West on vocals. So by the time all the paper blood stuff is said and done, uh, Anderson's essentially putting together a new band to move forward with. So there's a couple of years gap here. The albums have come out pretty consistently, you may have noticed. But after Paper Blood in 2005, it wouldn't be until 2008 that the next album would come along. And this one had some hype around it because the new vocalist was none other than Mark Bowles. Mark has been in a ton of projects over the years, He's probably best known by heavy metal fans for being on some of Ingwe Malmsteen's albums, in particular Trilogy. But, you know, he's performed with lots of others, too. And so a lot of folks were like, oh, wow, okay. Landed a known quantity, you know, pretty big name, you know, well-respected as a good vocalist. And then they made the questionable decision, in my opinion anyway, to... Try to, again, the band needs maybe a little bit of a re, uh, jump start, get back to their heights. And so they played the part two card. And their next album is Paradox 2 Collision Course. It's like, oh, you did that. You're going to try to, you know, basically again, use the coattails of your most successful album uh, to kind of, you know, add into the hype of having Mark Bowles as your new vocalist and hope that catapults you back into a place of prominence. Spoiler alert, it didn't exactly work. Um, before I discuss that a little bit, let's check out a clip of this. Um, we'll see, which track did I pick from this one? We'll hear a clip from the song Divide and Reign, R-E-I-G-N. So divide them and reign over them. Here you go, Mark Bowles, now fronting Royal Hunt. Oh, 
So there we hear Mark Bowles with the band. Um, I never felt like Mark quite fit in right for Royal Hunt's sound. Again, he's obviously a very accomplished vocalist. Somehow his voice doesn't feel quite right for the material. Um, Some of it may just be that, again, even though he's obviously a very well-known commodity as a vocalist, he is trying to follow up on two extremely good vocalists who were perfect for the Royal Hunt sound. And I just never quite felt like he sounded right for the band. On paper, it seems like a great idea to have him as the vocalist for Royal Hunt. But in practice, it didn't quite come together. Now, I don't think this is the only issue with this album. Again, calling it Paradox 2 sets up expectations in people's brains and this album doesn't really, you know, come close to the glories that were included on the first Paradox album. There are some instrumental motifs that they use to try to connect the two albums and stuff, but it just doesn't quite come together. The songwriting's not quite there. Um, Mark's voice just isn't quite hitting it right on the head. And as such, you know, this album, I think, at least by myself and some others uh, it was actually a bit of a letdown it's like yeah no no you you scored big with your return when you had john west replace dc cooper this time though yeah the rotating vocalist position has kind of caught up with you a little bit and sure enough mark would only stick around for one more album after this uh the next album was simply titled x for 10 um, because we're on their 10th album which came out in 2010 i don't know if i've ever even heard this album yeah when i pulled it up on metal archives getting things ready for this looking at the cover and the track list i'm like did this just completely pass me by and i didn't bite on it it, it might have you know, at this point, you know, Royal Hunt were in a little bit of a funk as far as I was concerned. You know, the Paradox 2 album didn't really work out so great, in my opinion. Paper Blood and Eyewitness had been, you know, lesser than the things that came before it. And again, you know, there are some people who are fans and will, you know, buy every album a band puts out. They'll always give them that chance. I am not that fan. Uh... Part of it is I have no limited money to spend on stuff. Part of it is also that I don't really feel that, you know, I owe bands undying loyalty for all time. If you keep putting out a bunch of albums I don't like, why should I keep buying them? Sure, you're, as the artist, can make whatever music you want to. That's fine. You don't have to make something to please me. I don't expect you to. But if you're putting out something that I don't enjoy... Why do I keep handing you money over and over and over? No, I'm I'm not going to do that. Maybe I'm just a cheap bastard. Uh, you know, maybe I don't have any sense of loyalty, blah, 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 whatever. But, you know, one bad album, yeah, okay, it happens to everybody. A couple of weaker albums, yeah, it's a thing. And when you start stringing together, like, you know, about three in a row, and again, that means it's probably a span of at least six to you know, eight or ten years since you've put out an album I really liked. No, thanks. I don't need to hear that. So, yeah, I can't really comment on the X album. Maybe I gave it a chance uh, and previewed it or something when it came out. 
If I did, it made no impression whatsoever. And so that was kind of that. So what do you do when you are kind of maybe down in a bit of a funk, can't quite get your groove back? You try once again to go back to what worked. And in 2011, quick turnaround time on this one, uh, Andre comes back with Royal Hunt for this album, Show Me How to Live. Mark Bowles is out as vocalist, and this album sees the return of DC Cooper to the fold. Uh, which, of course, that was a surefire way to get the attention of you know, wayward Royal Hunt fans like myself. It's like, you've got a new album? Yeah, sure, whatever. Who's singing this time? Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Now you can have some of my money again. I will pay to see what that sounds like. And it sounds fantastic. DC steps right back in, kind of sounds like he never really left. And they put out, yes, you know, their best album you know, since uh, the mission easily. Let's check out a clip of this and see how... Cooper sounded on his return. This will be a clip from the song called Hard Rain Coming. Absolutely return to glory for sure. Uh, Show Me How to Live is a fantastic album, a great return to form for the band. And again, it is worth pointing out, it's not like the band ever really strongly deviated from their core sound. They didn't start playing new metal albums or something like that. Yeah, They didn't become a groove metal band for five albums in a row. Yeah, they just maybe kind of lost their muse a little bit, distracted with band members coming and going. But, you know, bringing Cooper back in, you know, getting you a good core of musicians kind of, you know, cemented in place a little more firmly uh, worked wonders. And it was a fantastic album. And looking forward again, this is 2011, so it's already been over a decade. The band has remained relatively stable since then. There have been a few more, you know, minor changes, but Cooper has stayed on vocals. Uh, Anderson, of course, is still the driving force there. But uh, they've put out a string of albums. I'm not going to play more clips because they've pretty much stuck to their wheelhouse. Uh, 2013 saw them release A Life to Die For, which is another fantastic album. It's very good, very reminiscent in some ways of the Moving Target album. That was DC Cooper's first with the band. 2015 saw the release of Devil's Dozen. This one didn't... Uh, have the same like immediate impact and likability as A Life to Die For and uh, Show Me How to Live, but it actually grew on me pretty fast. Uh, so that one's also a very good album. Um, in the past several years, they have released three more albums that I have never really given a ton of time. In 2018, they released Cast in Stone. Uh, and then in 2020 and 2020, uh, Double check here. 2020 and 2022, they released a two-part album called Dystopia and then Dystopia Part 2. Um, the Dystopia albums, I've noticed, have gotten slightly lower reviews, and some people have been 
you know, kind of making comments. They feel like DC's voice may be going out a little bit, that he doesn't quite have, you know, the same, you know, range and emotive power that he once did. I have not heard either of those albums in their entirety, so I'm not in a position to make any kind of judgments on them. I haven't really avoided the albums for any reason, except for that again. Yeah, how many $24 Royal Hunt CDs do I keep wanting to, you know, special order through, you know, Amazon sellers and stuff like that? I, when I stumble on these for a better price, I'm very likely to pick them up and give them a try. There's some other good stuff in the Royal Hunt catalog as well that I've skipped over. There's a follow-up to the 1996 live album that's called 2006. Uh, and again, let me double check the details on that. That one I have not uh, ever played as much, but it is a good uh, live album nonetheless. Design layout is kind of similar to the 96 album, uh, but with a kind of different color scheme, more of a white and blue. It's another two CD set, and it comes you know, there near the end of the John West era. So if you're a big fan of what they were doing at that time, it's a chance to hear John West perform live with the band. And again, they go back. Uh, let me check. Look at the track list. I'm pretty sure it's a chance to hear West do some of the older material also. Uh, there's a few of the older songs still on the uh, track list. Yes. Although, yeah, yeah, there are several. Uh, a good chunk of the track list is from John West's era, which makes sense. He was on for four albums, so you'd expect a lot of that. And then they have yet another live album, a more recent one. Uh, this one's called Cargo. I, I admit I was a little disappointed they didn't call it like 2016 <laughs> because he had established a thing. It's okay. You could have ran with it. But Cargo did come out in 2016, so they could have done it, or they decided not to. And I want to see who's... I mean, this has to be DC Cooper era... Uh, yes, this is, you know, from the more recent years with DC Cooper. Uh, I don't think I have ever heard this live album either, because again, now you have to pay the markup price on a two CD set instead of just a one. But again, something that I will uh, check out and pick up at some point. Maybe I've heard it online when it came out, but, you know, never actually pulled the trigger on getting a copy. So yeah, lots of other good stuff that you can hear from Royal Hunt. I realize, again, the style of music is not going to be for every headbanger out there. But if you appreciate really strong vocals, uh, well-written instrumentation, you're okay with a you know strong keyboard presence throughout the tunes, uh, yeah, Royal Hunt's a band that you might should check out. They've been at it for so long, they're you know what we would consider a legacy band at this point. 32 years, 16 albums in the studio. Uh, they've definitely earned their place among Progressive Metal's royalty. You see what I did there. All right, let's wrap this one up. So now let's talk metal in the comments down below. If this just isn't your bag, that's fine. I get it. If the style of music does hit with you, have you heard Royal Hunt before? If so, who's your favorite vocalist that they've had on board? They've had some very good ones. Uh, some I like more than others. Other people may really like, you know, the Brockman era or the Mark Bowles albums. Let me know which one is your favorite. What are your favorite albums? Are there certain periods of the band's history you've never had a chance to check out again, just because their material's not always been the most available? And what other bands do you like in this particular style? Progressive metal is a subgenre I don't dig into deeply. When I find a band I like, I tend to stick with them for a long time. Royal Hunt's a great example. You know, Seventh Wonder out of Sweden is another great example. A lot of bands, though, I check out, you know, an album or two, and I feel like, eh, you know, sometimes they're showing off a little bit too much with their instrumentation, and sometimes the songwriting just doesn't really gel. The bands I like are ones that, you know, while very talented, can really put together very strong songs. So if you have other recommendations for progressive metal bands like Royal Hunt, that other viewers, watchers, and readers should be checking out and giving a chance, please add their names to the comments down below so that people have access to that information. And when they're in the mood for this stuff, they know which bands to focus in on. 
All right, that is going to do it for this time. So until the next video, everybody, please take care. And as always, keep banging your head, even if it's a royal head.